In this example, we're going to be covering creating CSS styles with some of the new features of Export Kit version 126. And what we can do is open up uh, EK126509, and this is our CSS styles example. Now, what you'll note from the design is that we have two basic columns. One is our normal column, and one is our column with our CSS styles applied. If we take a look at the objects individually, you'll see that for number one, we basically have a shape, and number two, we have a text element, and number three, uh, what it is, is it's a shape that we converted into an image. So uh, basically just to denote an actual image itself. So these are the three main objects that are supported in Photoshop um, that you can basically apply CSS styles to. Now you'll note in our CSS classes what we've done is we've applied a style to each individual element. And you'll see for our shape we gave it a blue glow. And uh, for our actual text element what we did was we gave it a header font. And for our images we gave them image button. Now these individual styles are reflective and you can note them here visually of the styles that we created created in our actual Photoshop document and we do this uh, with our styles folder so um, and I know the naming convention might seem a little bit uh, arbitrary at first but what it is is basically you have your styles pluralized which is your group and you have your individual style singular that you can add to each individual element so if we take a look at the styles themselves you'll see that what we have here is a blue glow and this is just uh, basically a layer effect we have a header font where we've changed the, the size and the color of the font itself and we've added an individual image that we're using as our image button and these are just the actual names of the styles themselves and you can see, note this here in the actual layer names now because we've added an individual style reflective of the styles that we've added in our folder what we can do is reuse these elements um, basically unlimited throughout our document. So what will happen is that this element here will denote these features, this will denote these features, and these will denote this feature. And if we go ahead and export this, we can take a look in the output. Now there are a few settings that we want to enable because of this. One of them is layer effects because we're using layer effects. Again, relative positions we should always enable. And we're going to use CSS images. Now CSS images are mandatory if you're using CSS styles and you want to include images of any type. So let's go ahead and export this. Once the export is complete, we can take a look at our output and we can see exactly how this was done. Actually, before we do that, let's take a look at the skins really quick. Um, in our actual folder, you'll see that what it's done is it's saved a few I images, and these are reflective of the files, or sorry, the layers that we have in our document. Um, but we basically have image button, and we only have one individual class or actual item that reflects this, and this is a class in our file. So let's go ahead and look at the output file. Now you'll see for our normal, this is retained uh, from our actual Photoshop document. Let's just take a look at that really quick again. This is our normal and this is our actual CSS classes. These are the ones that have the styles applied. So in the output, what will happen is our blue glow will apply to that square. Our text elements will actually uh, now render with the fonts and the colors that we denoted in our styles. And our images will now use the image button class that we used and it will reuse that individual object. So now you can actually save on bandwidth with, uh, with your images. 